Um, the, the goal, so to speak, is to take this picture that we see here and try to quantify uh, or estimate from the data the best um, value for this gap that we see here. So how much should we uh, change the model from Molde to Christian Sun, for instance, if we use this regression? Um, yeah. So we're probably going to follow this uh, um, this flat prices example all the way through. So and then you will get the general idea from that. Right. So the idea is that if you have something like this, this variable here, which is mainly just a nominal thing, it should not be included directly into a, a regression model. So, um, that let's just look how, how, what does it mean if we do that? So, x1 or y is the price, x1 is the area, and x2 is the town which is 1, 2, or 3 for our three, all the crystal soon and all the soon. So just very naively, you could try to do something like this and insert this numerical code in as a second variable here. But then you can write, what does its model say for the three towns? Well, it says, of course, if you ignore the error term here, what you get here is the, the model's uh, prediction for the mean price. So it says for Molde, it should be, the mean price should be some beta zero plus beta one times the area. So you have this square meter price times the area. And then some coefficient beta two here, okay? Which you can, of course, estimate. And then, because x2 is 1 for Molde, of course. So if I put x2 equal to 1, then I get just beta 2 from this term. OK, so if we go to Christian Sun, look at the flat in Christian Sun, then x2 is 2. So I get the same basic structure here. But then I get a correction from Molde's level to Christian Sun, which is equal to beta 2 actually, because you get beta 2 here and then 2 beta 2 here. And then if I go to Olesund, then my x2 is equal to 3. So the same beta 2 follows me and I get now 3 of it here. So this says, as I try to figure out, it says, okay, I can estimate for Molde some line, then I can correct to Christian Sun. Okay, so this is Molde. Supposing this is Christian Sun, that means beta 2 is probably negative. So I go down to Christian Sun. But if I fix this model like this, I need to go another step of the same size when I go to Olesun. So this, this kind of structure forces me to go here to Olesun. And I don't like that. I don't want Olesun, the correction from, say, Molde to all assume to be related to this correction, right? I want to be able to have a separate. I kind of like this piece, but I want to put all assume freely into this as a as a different correction. And that's not possible with this kind of model here. So forget about this. It's not going to work. The solution here is what we call um, dummy variables. They're also sometimes called indicator. This is the same. And 
this is also a kind of a trick that looks maybe a little bit magic in the first place, but you will see that it really makes sense. So first of all, what is a dummy variable? It's something that is just either one or zero. So when we have a categorical variable, I can define dummy variables like saying one for molde, which I call d1 here. That's going to be one or zero, and it's going to be one for all the flats that are in molde, and it's going to be zero otherwise. So it's one. Well, I don't have to maybe write this on the blackboard. It's, it says here. So it's, it's one if the flat is in molde, and otherwise it's zero. So it indicates whether the flat is in molde or not. That's why we call it sometimes an indicator variable. And then you can do the same for each of these values here. So you have a D2 indicating Christian Sun, and you have a D3 indicating all Sun. So they are one for each of the towns separately and zero outside in a way. Now, um, what we're going to do here is just simply to include, instead of including this categorical one, two, three variable in the regression model, we are going to include some of these dummy variables. And yeah, the first idea is, OK, let's throw in all of them. That seems most, most efficient, right? <coughs> but you see that these are not independent variables. So of course, since they indicate each of their towns, we're going to have, I mean, there's always one of these are going to be one, and the other are going to be 0. So if you sum the tree, you're going to have one, which means this for instance. So d3 can be expressed as a perfect linear function of the two others. And if you remember one of my first, um, or the, the basic assumption, which is a, b, c, d, e of multiple regression is no 100% correlation allowed. It was one of the, I mean, the complicated things that I did last week to show you the trouble that can appear when you have uh, completely correlated variables into regression. So we cannot use all three, and we don't need to either. So we are going to just take one of them out and use the two others in the regression model. And then you will see that the excluded category will become the reference category. And the two others will be used to estimate corrections. So if I leave out Molde, I'm going to be able to estimate a correction to Christian Sun and a different correction to Olsun by the coefficients of D2 and D3, respectively. And this sounds um, airy, but it's quite easy in a way. So suppose we leave out uh, the mold uh, dummy and uh, have the model like this. this model here with the error term. I use the linear function of floor space area. And then I include a constant times this dummy variable for uh, Christian Sun, plus another constant times the dummy for Olsun, and then some randomness. And if I sort of average out the randomness, I say that the mean price should be a function of these three variables like this. And this looks um, 
complicated in a way, but what we're going to do is to see what happens if we're in Molde, what happens if we're in Kristiansund, or what happens if the flat is in Ålesund with this model. And then you see that this makes a lot of sense, hopefully. I cannot force you to ag agree that it makes sense, of course, but uh, I hope uh, most of you will. Okay. So what does this model say if my flat is in Molde? Well, these indicators for Kristiansund and Ålesund would be zero. So you insert zero here and zero here. You remain with the basic linear relationship on floor space area. So it says this. Here is x1, here is y, and the model describes a particular line y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 one here. Okay. okay, let's see what does it mo this model say if we consider the flats, the part of the data that are from Christian Sun. Um, Right, what happens now is that d2 is going to be always 1, while d3 is always 0. Because d3 indicates Olsen, d2 indicates Kristiansund. So this is going to be constantly 1 for all those flats. Go to your basic model. Put this equal to 1, this equal to 0. What do you get? Or better look at the mean here. This 1, this equal to 0 you get um, you get this so it's beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 and then an additional constant here so it works as a constant but it's only active in Christian Sun because it's multiplied with this dummy right so this c2 it just kicks in whenever I talk about the flat in Christian Sun and it's a constant so for Christian Sun flats it just adds to the constant term of the model. So I get a new linear function of x1, but the constant term is possibly changed with this amount. And I happen to know that this is going to be negative. So it here says whatever was the constant in Molde, I subtract a little bit for all flats in Kristiansund. So this is Christian Sun. Y equals beta zero plus C two plus beta one X one. And this amount is the C two. Okay, but then uh, trivially in the same fashion if I go to a flat in Olsen. What happens? Well, now uh, the d2s will be zero because this indicates Christian Sun is going to be constantly zero in Olsen, while d3 is going to be constantly one. So, inserting into the equation for the y mean again, you get this dice because there's a zero here, and this is a one, so you get the c3 correction. And the same thing happens. You get the basic linear term that is common for all uh, flats, and a new correction that is only kicking in for the all the soon parts. And you to uh, to read it, it's better to put this along with the original constant, so you get beta zero plus possibly a correction, and then the linear thing here. And this could be where, I mean, it could be whatever, but in this picture, it's something like this. So this is all the soon. And this little piece here is C3. So I'm going to take my. You just take your data, 
you compute these indicator var variables and put them into a linear model. Note that this is a linear regression model. It just has x1 and then the new d2 and d3 variables. But it's a linear model. So there's nothing basically new in SPSS. <coughs> so I'm just going to see if I wrote down approximately what I wanted to do. So, um, yeah, so you see, in, in theory, this accomplishes exactly what we wanted to estimate individual corrections of the constant term in the model. So we can shift the relationship. And why do we want to do that? Well, we could be interested in the in differences in the market, but do we, you would also uh, agree that if I can do this properly, it will improve the prediction power of this model. Because if I take a model uh, flat in Kristiansund, I'm going to use this line. Because I know the level is lower. And if it happens to be a flat in Molde, that is, say, 100 square meters, I'm going to just up my estimate with this amount. So it's, it has to be. Given that these corrections are significant, it has to be a better predictive model. Right. So let's see if this is true. Um, first of all, you realize that when I have town, it's one, two, one, three, one, two, and so on. It's easy to make, for instance, D1, which is the indicator of Molde. It's going to be 1 whenever this is 1, and then 0 whenever this is different from 1. So it's going to be 0, 1, 0, and so on. So it's going to be something like this. Uh, so you pick some reasonable name for it in SPSS. For instance, dmol could be the name for the molde indicator. It's not so easy to use this kind of indexes in SPSS. But just use some name that uh, tells you what it is. And Well, maybe now I uh, missed on the codes here. But that's not important, actually. I don't remember whether town equal 2 is molde or not, but that's not very important. Uh, and we can check that. So the, the, the most um, compact way to compute such a dummy variable in SPSS is simply to allow SPSS to evaluate what we call a logical expression. So we just define this, this expression in SPSS. And then it, this will be 1 if it's true. And it will be 0 if it's false. So this is classical computer stuff. And there's a second way which uses this recode thing that is described in the compendium. That is an alternative. But I'm going to use the first one here. So let's start to look at SPSS and the flat prices. And yeah. So you can switch now here by looking at the, the labels, which defines the town and the numerical code. So one is molded, that's correct. And it's ordered now on town, so down here you have Christian Sun. And ultimately there's gonna be some all the Sun stuff down here with a value of three. And it does not matter if the data is ordered uh, by this variable, that's that's totally unimportant. Um, 
for, for what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to do, to compute now, three new variables. They're going to be my dummies d1 to d3. Uh, so use the transform. And I'm going to write here, say, dmol for molder. Um, and I'm just going to write town equals 1. So it's going to evaluate this, and this is either true or false. And if it's true, it's going to be a 1 in the row. And if it's false, it's going to be a 0. So you get this here. And now it's just uh, too many decimals, because this is going to be supposed to be an integer. And it looks like this. So it's 1 here when the town is 1. And then it turns 0 when the town switches to being 2 here. Okay. And then you just do the same for Christian Sun. You find some name for it. Key SU for Christian Sun. Uh, and the expression is now going to be just Evaluate town equal to 2. Is this true or false? If it's true, I'm going to have a 1. So that's what I want. So you get this. And I'm going to change the decimals after I computed the final one, which I call um, DASU for all the soon. And it's going to be town equal to 3. Where is my data? I'm back here. So. Like this. So now you see I have three indicator variables, and they just single out which town we're in by putting a 1 or a 0 there. And then we are actually ready. Um, to run this regression. We just have to, to choose a reference category so we can start with molder, for instance. Then I include uh, DKSU and DASU. And I this is what I draw on the blackboard. I want to estimate the corrections relative to mold the mold mode. So you go linear and the dependent is still the price. And I want to have the X1 variable which is the area. And then I just uh, kick in these two dummies. And maybe we want some confidence intervals for the coefficient, coefficients. And uh, go. So what do we see? You see uh, some uh, square meter price estimate here. It's called about, or it's evaluated to about 9.2. So this is kind of common for the whole, uh, for the whole data material. And then you see coefficient for DKSU. This is the C2 here. It's about minus 100,000. It says 101,000 here, but it's about minus 100,000. With a confidence interval from, say, minus 126 to about 70, 
minus 75,000. So the correction is somewhere, should be somewhere in that interval, and it's highly significant because um, the test whether this coefficient is zero really comes out with a very low p value here. So remember, we are co comparing to the mold level, and then there's a correction to Olson, estimated at 30,000. And uh, here, the p value is still lo below 0 0.05, so it's barely significant, but still it's there. Um, but it's much more marginal. So the, the <laughs> confidence interval for this correction from molded to Olsen is actually just from 1,000 to 60,000 somewhere. So it, it could be close to zero, or it could be somewhat larger. But the main effect is from molded to Christian Sud. And this is more or less what we saw in the first scatter plot. So it makes sense here. If you look at the scale and the difference between the blue and the green line, well, it could conceivably be something like 100,000, this difference here. Yeah. So what about the increased uh, predictive power here? How do we measure this? Well, two ways. You look at R square. And you look at the um, estimate for the standard deviation of the error term. So this is with the dummy variables. It's about 0 0.95. And the SE is about, uh, what do we say, 66,000, if you like. So this is with dummies. And let's see what happens without dummies. Let me just go and run the regression and kick out these two. Um, yeah. So you see some changes in, for instance, the now I'm just running a regression with a whole bunch of data all together. I'm ignoring the fact that there are actually three towns here. So I'm sort of coming to a line that sort of averages out these differences. Um, so if I should guess, this line will be probably somewhere here. It means I'm slightly overestimating prices in Kristiansund and I'm underestimating in the other two towns. And what happens with my R square is but down to about 0 0.90 and my SE is about 88, right? So R square here is 0 0.90 and the SE about 88 without dummies. So what does it mean? If you remember my 95% margin of error uh, rule of thumb, we took two times this guy. So two times 66, that should be about 132. Yeah, okay, let's say 130,000 to be not too precise. And here, the margin of error, if I want to estimate using this model, should be something like 2 times 88, that should be 156. So we're losing something like um, 25,000 or something in, in prediction precision if we don't take the difference between towns into account. Yeah. Um, 
does it matter which reference category we choose? Well, not really, because if we take Christian Sun as a reference category instead, it will be more or less kept here, and then you will get some. You will get two positive uh, corrections that will be both very significant. So we can demonstrate that. So now what I say was Christian Sun as the reference category. So I put in Molde and all Sun indicators, but I leave Christian Sun out of the equation and run go. You see you get the same R square, the same more or less at least the same. Yeah, it's basically it's very much the same. And the correction here now is again 1,000, but in the positive direction. And if you remember the difference between Molde and Olsen, it was about 30,000. So it's a difference between these two. So here's 101, and here's 131. So these two models, they tell you ac the same. They just formulate it in a different way, whether you use this or that as a reference category. But they will give you the same predictions, at least very <laughs> close to that. Yeah. OK, and then. Then, of course, uh, what we want to do in addition to this, we know that okay, the, s the floor space area is important. We now see that the, the town belonging can be important for determining the price, but we know also there are other variables here. So there's nothing stopping us from estimating these corrections, but also taking into account, for instance, the distance to the center and so on. So that means we can look at some really bigger models here. So we can maybe kick in more or less everything. Um. Of course, I want to keep that one out of the equation, because this is the my one, two, three variable, which I ignored or deemed impossible from the first in the first place. And you do this. We have now a lot of variables. We have six nine x variables. So it's beginning to be quite complicated uh, in terms of there might be correlations and stuff. But what we should expect is to have a very high uh, r square, for instance, for this one. And you see this. It's more or less as high as you can hope to get it in any regression model. It's very close to 1. Right, so you see, um, down here, you see what we usually see when we throw in like 10 x variables. You see some of them significant and some not significant. So what we really want to do here before interpreting these results is maybe to eliminate what is not significant here. And the quick and not so dirty way to do it is to use the stepwise regression. So we do something like this and yeah, kick OK. And then just bear with me for all the output. But what is the final model? It's easier to see what is not in there. So the number of rooms is kicked out. And the age of the flat is deemed not significant. But otherwise, you see the final model here. It involves all of the other variables with high significance. So all the p-values are very low. And this is still with um, Christian Sun as the reference category. But you see that, as I told you, and as you will, or as you have already learned, that these estimates, they can vary a lot when you throw in or throw out other variables. 
but here it seems at least fairly stable. So I get my new corrections from town to town. From Kristiansund to Molde is about now 107,000. And now it's very similar to Ålesund, which is 109,000. And what you see in addition, you look at the confidence intervals for the estimates. It's getting much more narrow, so we can sort of find a much more uh, precise quantification of these effects when we take other things into account. Okay. So I'm guessing now just to play with this uh, concept of the dummy variables, since these two are so equal in this model, I guess that if I use mold as a reference category, then the correction to all Sun would not be significant, right? Because they're when I correct from Christian Sun to Molde or Olsen, I get almost the same. So the difference between those two southern towns seems to be very small. So let's just check on that. And this is what you should do actually for yourself to sit down and try to play with this. Uh, so I'm just going to um, uh, yeah. So um, it's getting to the end of the day, so my head is not more working well. I'm almost forgetting what to say. But my idea was to use mold as a reference category, right? So I just put in this one here instead. there and do the stepwise for instance again and go through all of this now you see the final model is in six here it's it's um, with mold as a reference level I get a correction to Christian Sun at again 108,000 minus but all the soon is not part of this game anymore. So it says that probably the level in more than all soon is not not significantly different. But of course, anything else with these two models is the same. You get the same prediction quality and so on. Right. Um, So, of course, this exercise is a bit about playing with these uh, ideas here. Um, so I think probably these two final slides It's about interaction effect. So uh, let me just tell you very briefly what it is, and then you can read this um, if you like. If you think that, that what I've said up to now is very difficult, this is a little bit more difficult. So then you can decide whether you want to read it or not. But it, it's very basically about the fact that we might have what we did here was to just um, sort of look at models where the constant term is changed. But it's very common in, in practice that you also have, you can have one town with a price level like this and another one with a, um, a higher square meter price, right? So it would be uh, something like y equal to beta 0 plus uh, or say, <coughs> like this here, if you have only these two towns, and then y equals to beta 0, and you correct the, the constant term with a coefficient. But you also correct the, the slope, which is this one, right? So you have something like. Uh, what we call that, we, we call it B1 or something. <coughs> oh, like this. 
So that's what we call an interaction effect. Right, so you can have a look at it, and I'm probably going to start talking a little bit about that next week, and then do the horrible thing with the logarithms in the end, which is chapter 7. So that's probably all for today. Yeah, just work on the exercises.